Hi everyone, this lesson is on why we need vitamin B12. So we're going to talk about the two enzymes that require vitamin B12 for their functioning. And then we're going to talk about some of the important biochemistry with regards to those enzymes and why they are important. So we've talked about vitamin B12 a lot on this channel, but this lesson is going to be more looking at the details of the biochemistry pathways. Let's first talk about where we get vitamin B12 or cobalamin. So we get it from our diet. We get it from eating meat and fish and also from dairy and eggs and some other sources as well. And we'll briefly talk about how it's absorbed in our body. If you want more information, please check out my full lesson on the absorption of vitamin B12. So briefly, when we eat something that contains vitamin B12, our salivary glands release something called haptocorn, which is also referred to by several other names, one being R factor. And this binds to vitamin B12. The vitamin B12 and haptocorn complex enters into the stomach. Our parietal cells of the stomach release hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor. The haptocorn actually protects the vitamin B12 from hydrochloric acid. So it protects it from being degraded or destroyed by the hydrochloric acid. The vitamin B12 haptocorn complex enters into the duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine. Pancreatic enzymes like chymotrypsin and trypsin act to break apart that vitamin B12 haptocorn complex, allowing vitamin B12 to bind to intrinsic factor. So the vitamin B12 and intrinsic factor complex go through the rest of the small intestine and then the vitamin B12 is absorbed at the terminal ileum. So this is how vitamin B12 is absorbed in our body. So that is the absorption of vitamin B12, but why exactly do we need it? So there are two enzymes, again, that require vitamin B12. The first one is homocysteine methyltransferase. This enzyme is also known as methionine synthase. So this homocysteine methyltransferase enzyme acts on something called homocysteine and processes it into methionine. Methionine is an important amino acid. This is the reason why we can also call this enzyme methionine synthase. In the process of converting homocysteine to methionine, something called methyl THF or methyl tetrahydrofolate is processed into tetrahydrofolate. So the methyl group is removed from the tetrahydrofolate to regenerate tetrahydrofolate. This is going to be an important cofactor for many different processes, and we're going to mention them here in a moment. Now, we mentioned that methionine is produced from homocysteine with homocysteine methyltransferase, but methionine can actually enter into what is called the activated methyl cycle to regenerate homocysteine. So there are multiple enzymes in the activated methyl cycle. If you want more information, please check out my lesson on this topic. And something that's important that is generated in that activated methyl cycle is something called S-adenosyl methionine or SAM. And this S-adenosyl methionine is an important intermediary product because it's used as a cofactor for many different processes, including catecholamine biosynthesis and synthesis of melatonin as well. Now we mentioned that methionine is an important amino acid, so it's going to be used in protein synthesis. And tetrahydrofolate is itself an important cofactor that can be used in the synthesis of pyrimidine bases, which are going to be used in DNA synthesis. So as you can see, vitamin B12 is very important because it is required for the functioning of homocysteine methyltransferase. So not only does this enzyme generate methionine, which can be used for protein synthesis, or the methionine can be shunted into the activated methyl cycle to produce s methionine, which is involved in important processes itself, including catecholamine synthesis and melatonin synthesis, but it can also generate tetrahydrofolate. So it can remove the methyl group from methyl tetrahydrofolate to tetrahydrofolate, which is itself important in permitting base synthesis, which is required for DNA synthesis. So because of all this, the DNA synthesis especially is going to be important in production of red blood cells, and this is the reason why we can see issues with macrocytic anemia in a vitamin B12 deficiency. So if we don't have enough vitamin B12, homocysteine methyltransferase doesn't work properly. We get a buildup of homocysteine, and then we get decreases in tetrahydrofolate and decreases in DNA synthesis, leading to macrocytic anemia and issues with DNA synthesis for white blood cell production. So we have hypersegmented neutrophils as well. So a lot of biochemical information here, but as you can see, vitamin B12 is critically important because it is required for this particular enzyme. Now, the second enzyme that requires vitamin B12 is known as methylmalonyl-CoA mutase. So methylmalonyl-CoA mutase acts on methylmalonyl-CoA to convert it into succinyl-CoA. 
Now, you might be wondering, where does methylmalonyl-CoA come from? It's actually going to be a product of the metabolism of many different energy substrates. These include amino acids, such as methionine, but also branched-chain amino acids. It can also be the product of short-chain fatty acids and cholesterol. These get processed and metabolized into something called propionyl-CoA in multiple steps, and then within multiple steps, the propionyl-CoA can be converted to methylmalonyl-CoA. So these energy substrates can eventually get to methylmalonyl-CoA, which then can be processed into succinyl-CoA. Now, succinyl-CoA is very important because it's used in the Krebs cycle, which is also known as the citric acid cycle. And this is the cycle wherein aerobic metabolism is utilized to produce cellular energy. So very important, methylmalonyl-CoA mutase, the functioning, the proper functioning of this enzyme acts as a critical endpoint for the metabolism of a lot of energy substrates, including those branched-chain amino acids, short-chain fatty acids, and cholesterol, allowing those energy substrates to get processed into succinyl-CoA, which can then be used in the Krebs cycle for energy production. So very important. So if we have a vitamin B12 deficiency, we're not going to have proper functioning of methylmalonyl-CoA mutase. We're going to have a buildup of methylmalonyl-CoA. So not only are we going to have an issue with a buildup of methylmalonyl-CoA and a reduced production of cellular energy, this methylmalonyl-CoA can be processed into a toxic intermediate known as methylmalonic acid. So methylmalonic acid is eventually going to build up and it can cause damage to neurons and more specifically can cause axonal neuropathy. So it can cause neuropathy of the axons of neurons. So very important if we have vitamin B12 deficiency, especially for longer periods of time, we can have buildup of this methylmalonic acid, which is going to cause damage to neurons. And if this vitamin B12 deficiency is left for long enough, there can be irreversible damage to neurons. And the neurons that are going to be especially damaged are the ones in the dorsal column medial lemniscus system. So that is the system that is affected in the central nervous system. And it can cause a variety of neurological issues, including issues with balance, two-point discrimination. There can be issues with symmetric paresthesias, these numbness and tingling sensations on different parts of the body, and some other important neurological findings as well. If you want more information, please check my full lesson on the signs and symptoms of a vitamin B12 deficiency as well. So those are the two important enzymes that require vitamin B12 for their functioning and some of the other important biochemistry with regards to the proper functioning of these enzymes. If you want more information, please check my other lessons on vitamin B12. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.